Welcome back to another innovation review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the HTR from Neza. First, let's talk about the looks. So the HTR is definitely a city bike. This is a bike that feels most comfortable on the concrete, in a bike lane, that's pretty much its home. Every aspect of this bike confirms that it is definitely a city ride. We've got these city type tires, we've got these nice little fenders, a sleek, minimalist sort of design to it. We've also got some mounting points for a rear rack back here. Basically, this is a bike that you would wanna ride around in the city, the suburbs, on the boardwalk, generally any area with not a whole lot of hills and a nice smooth riding surface. I'm a big fan of the colors they have here. We've got black and white for color options with our frame, both of which come with that red Neza logo. We've got the black one here, and we have those chrome end caps on the top two, which really just accentuate the bike a little bit. So from a looks perspective, this bike is eye-catching, seems to be well thought out. It's a slick city bike. Next, let's talk about the motor. So the motor we have here is a 350 watt XD rear hub motor. Now, as far as performance, I feel like the performance was on par with some of the 350s, maybe not quite as sporty on the takeoff as some that we've tested in the past, but it does have a nice ramp up to this top speed of 15 miles per hour. As far as motor noise goes, it was a little bit louder than some of the other motors we've tested. However, with those Slick City tires, they're not really making a whole lot of noise, so it sometimes can accentuate the motor noise that we're hearing. The noise definitely wasn't anything crazy or wild. There wasn't neighbors coming out of their houses to watch me ride down the street. Just not something that is the ultimate stealth vehicle, if that's what you're looking for. Next, let's talk about the battery. In case you're wondering where the battery was, it is the C-Post. That's right, the C-Post is the battery. The battery for the HTR comes in two flavors. We've got a 5.2 amp hour battery and a 7.0 amp hour battery. Now, both of those are a little bit on the small side, however, Use case scenario for this bike doesn't really seem like that's gonna be a big deal. This isn't a bike where you would strap on 50, 60, 80 pounds of extra things to lug around, not really designed for commuting. So having those smaller amp hour batteries, not really a big deal. Both of the batteries are 36 volt Samsung batteries and the 5.2, which is the one that we got, it has 187 watt hours. These batteries take about four hours to get a full charge on them and you can get an estimated anywhere between 15 to 20 miles on the 5.2 amp hour battery, which is the one that we got here. And then your estimated max range is gonna increase a little bit if you upgrade to that 7.0 amp hour battery. The nice thing about having the battery as the seat post is it's very easy to get it on and off the bike. We have got this connection port down here on the bottom, got a nice little locking ring, making sure that's very secure down there. And then you can lift it out and charge the battery inside pretty easily. If you are gonna leave the battery in the frame, it is nice that the charge port is so high up on the bike. So you don't have to bend over looking for some hole in a dark garage. It's just right here under the seat. We'd pop this up, plug in the charger, and we are good to go. And even though the battery seems thick and fairly long, it is only coming in at that 5.2 pounds and that's with the saddle attached. So definitely a little bit of the weight here, but it is a lot less than some of the other batteries that we've seen on e-bikes. Now, you know, those bigger batteries, they've got more range, so it's a trade-off here. But if you're looking to have something where you could pop this on and off easily, five pounds is nothing to contend with. Next, let's talk about the brakes. So the brakes we have here are jack hydraulic calipers and these 160 millimeter disc brakes, both on the front and the rear. The brake handles do have motor inhibitors. This is nice to have because if we are going along, say we're using the throttle and we also go to put on the brake, there's not gonna be two fighting forces. Those brakes are gonna cut the power to the motor. And that's nice because that's gonna allow us to stop quickly and efficiently. The brakes here are mechanical as opposed to hydraulic. However, with this bike being as light as it is and not really getting up to too much speed, you know, 50 miles per hour is nothing to shake a stick at if you're walking, but in the world of e-bikes, that is a little bit on the slower side. And so having a lighter bike, not going very fast, having these mechanical disc brakes seems to do the job. Next, let's talk about the gears. Up here on the right, we have a one by seven micro shift trigger shifter. Now, this is my first time seeing these. It's actually also on the Neza Micro, which we'll be reviewing in a little bit. And normally you don't see trigger shifters on bikes at this price range, or if you do, you wish you didn't, but both of these seem to work really well. You know, they're a plastic construction. They've got a nice little window here so we can see what gear we're on. I feel like the shifter did a pretty good job overall. I don't really have any complaints about it. And that is connected back here to this Shimano Turney derailleur. Now, Turney is one of the lower level Shimano derailleurs. However, having that Shimano name brand is nice. We know we're getting some quality. 
They've been around for a while. They know what they're doing. So no complaints about this. The only thing I will point out is that this derailleur is very low to the ground. And that means that this is not a bike you're going to want to take off into the grass or on very uneven terrain. And also may need to watch yourself if you're going to be skirting up against walls or curbs, things like that. Just be very mindful that you've got this mechanical piece down here that, you know, needs to be protected. Next, let's talk about the extras. For extras here, we have got these bottle cage bosses. Now that's nice if you want to attach a water bottle, usually what they're for, or if there is a lock solution that you like that will mount to those, that's also convenient to have in a pretty good spot. We've got fenders both in the front and the rear. We have got this integrated front light that we could turn on and off from the keypad, which is nice. And then we've also got an integrated tail light in the back. There's also a spot to mount a rear rack here. It doesn't ship with the rear rack, but that is an extra that you can add on. Next, let's talk about the essentials. So the bike ships with everything you need to put it together, all the screws, all the bolts. It's got a few different Allen keys, which was nice. And I didn't have to use any of my own tools to put this bike together. All that being said, it really wasn't too much to set this bike up at all. I think the hardest part for me was actually putting the fenders together. And that's just because this is the first time I've ever actually had to assemble the fenders. Normally, those are pre-assembled and they find a good spot for those. But with these ones, they were not assembled and that is something I had to do myself. If I was allowed to make a suggestion, having those fenders ready to just be installed would probably be a good way to go. Next, let's talk about the suspension. So we don't have any front fork suspension or rear suspension here. So we're going to talk about the things that add suspension to this ride. First and foremost, and it's not something we usually touch on, it's going to be these foam grips. So having the foam grips here is going to absorb a little bit of that shock, a little bit of that shake and bacon, if you know what I mean. And I was surprised that it did that quite well. When I was out here for the ride test, I had a sprained wrist, so everything's pretty painful. I mean, just me using my hands to throw it around while I'm talking, recording this is kind of painful. But when I was on here, I wasn't getting a whole lot of that shock or shake, and so it wasn't causing me any additional pain, which was nice. There's no locking points on here, but they don't move at all. So I'm not sure how hard it would be to get these off if you needed to do some adjustments or you wanted to change out some of the components that are inside the grips. But when I pulled this thing out of the box, they were not moving at all. The next part of suspension we like to talk about are the tires. So the tires we have here are these 20 by two inch candid tires. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, these are street tires. There's no big knobbies on here, nothing wild. We don't have anything extra either as far as puncture protection or sidewall reflective stripes. Since this is mainly going to be a bike that's going to be ridden around cars, having a couple of those extra features here might be nice. So if we had some puncture protection, made sure we were able to get where we needed to go, and then also having those sidewall reflective stripes, so if a car is approaching you from the side, it's just a little extra visibility. We have a little bit of adjustment here as far as the PSI. We can either go from 40 to 65 PSI. Now, when I did my ride review, I was riding it around right at around that 40. I know we didn't have any of the extra suspension like we do on some bikes, so I was trying to give myself the most allowable cushion. The other part of suspension we love to talk about is the butt suspension. As we mentioned earlier, the saddle here is going to be connected to our battery, so if we take our battery somewhere, we're taking our saddle somewhere. From a comfort perspective, I would say that these saddles are probably not exactly the right fit for me. They are a little bit round, a little bit firm, and didn't fit me quite right. However, this is just a very basic saddle, and if it doesn't fit you either, you've got a lot of options. We have a very basic connection up here at the top, so you could pretty much replace that with any saddle you wanted. Next, let's talk about the controls. So all the control is over here on the left-hand side. We've got this three-button display. The display here is a grayscale LCD, so no fancy colors, nothing like that, but some people are into grayscale, so here you go. It's going to show us a few things. It's going to show us our level of pedal assist. It's also going to show us how much battery we have left, our speed, runtime, odometer, trip distance, average speed, max speed, volume, and total runtime. What is the volume, you ask? I don't know. I'm also asking that same question. I'm not 100% sure what metric that is measuring. But it's there. So if you know what volume is, there you go. You can you can see what it is. The bike also comes in kilometers per hour. I wasn't 100% positive and it wasn't made super clear how to change that to miles per hour. Also getting into the advanced settings was something I wasn't able to do. It must be a little bit different than most of the bikes that I'm used to. If you have one of these displays and you know how to get it from kilometers per hour into miles per hour, maybe even a little bit of unlocking, let me know down in the comments below. I'll pin it to the top so we can all be cruising around on these American machines. <laughs> uh, I'll leave it, that's funny. 
Next, let's talk about who this bike might be for. As we have mentioned throughout the review, this is a city bike. It is something that was designed to stay on the pavement and something that's recommended to stay on the pavement. Next, let's talk about some of the geometry measurements. We have got a 20.5 inch seat tube, an 18 inch reach, a 27 inch standover height, 23 inch minimum saddle height, 36 inch maximum saddle height, 25.5 inch width, 41 inch wheelbase, and a 62 inch length overall. The two most important measurements here being the 18 inch reach and the 27 inch standover height. With the 18 inch reach, I feel like that's very middle of the road, but that 27 inch standover height, it is a little bit deceiving. The bike looks a little bit smaller than it is in real life. And so that 27 inch standover height, just something to consider. And that about covers it for the nuts and bolts of the bike. So I'm gonna send it out to myself in the future, in the past. Oh, ah, yeah, I guess this one was in the past for the ride test. All right, guys, we are out here for the ride test portion. We are out here on the Neza HTR. And we're gonna go ahead and kick this off as if this were an acoustic bike. So we've got the bike turned off and we're just gonna pedal it around, shift through some of those gears. Put it in one real quick. And then shifting up to second. And third. All those shifts have been really good. Third to fourth took a little bit, but the shift itself wasn't too bad. Fourth to fifth. Again, just takes a little bit longer to shift, but really not too bad. Fifth to sixth, and finally we are in seventh gear. Not too bad as far as an acoustic ride here. Now, something to mention just real quick about the geometry with these handlebars being where they're at, and there's not really a whole lot of adjustments that we can do. Uh, you'll have to adjust the seat the only problem with that is, is as we increase the seat height for maybe some metal pedal geometry, we do lose out on that somewhat upright position and we just kind of end up leaning a little bit more forward. So just something to keep in mind. Let's go ahead and turn the bike on. And we'll start out in pedal assist level one. Easy breezy right around that. 11, 12 kilometers per hour, and pedal assist level two. Pedal assist level three. Pedal assist level four. And pedal assist level five. So with this bike, it only goes up to that top speed of 15 miles per hour or right around, cuts out about 24, 25 kilometers per hour on this side. So this isn't something that's gonna be, you know, a speed demon, not gonna break any records with it. But if you're just looking to scoot around the city or scoot around your neighborhood, that's kind of more of what this bike was designed to do. Let's go ahead and test out just the throttle on here. So we get the throttle down here on the left side. Now this particular motor, it's got a little bit more of a whine to it, a little bit more of that electric motor whine that you're used to seeing on some of these motors. And we're getting almost no road noise from the tires, so just kind of accentuating that motor noise a little bit. So the nice thing is here, because of the sensors we have, even if we are not using the motor, it's still gonna tell us how fast we're going. So even if we're going down here, let's put it, press this little off, it's still gonna tell us how fast we're going. So that's just a nice little feature. Now this isn't a bike you would primarily be riding around like that, but it is nice that you know we have that option to, if we're gonna be riding around acoustically, we know exactly how fast we're going. So let's go ahead, get this bad boy up to speed. Let's do a little braking test with it. Now these are mechanical disc brakes, but with a bike that's this small and the speeds that we're going, you know, again, only that 15, 16 miles per hour. I don't know if hydraulics are necessary here. Let's go ahead and do a little brake. Yeah, about five, six feet, honestly, for a full stop there. 
do one more. Get up to that top speed. And brake. Very nice, very controlled. Get about that six, seven foot mark for a full stop. Now, right out of the box, I didn't have to do anything with these. We didn't make any adjustments on the brakes. We didn't make any adjustments with the gears. We didn't adjust nothing. So this is right out of the box, how it performed for us. So it is cool that we get the fenders. We've got the front fender up here and the back fender back there. And those are something that we had to put together ourselves. Not really a huge deal, but it was my first time putting some fenders together. So it was a little bit more of a new experience. So it took me a little bit longer. However, you know, if you're just a pro fender putter together, shouldn't be any issue for you. The other nice thing about this bike and this particular design is that we've got that integrated front light so we don't have to get off to turn the light on. We can just hold this down and then boom, the light's on. You're not gonna see it in the, uh, the midday Texas sun. We'll go ahead and turn that off. Now, as far as brightness goes, this is something that I would feel pretty comfortable riding around in a uh, also lit environment. So if I'm riding around a neighborhood, they've got some street lights, things like that. From a safety perspective, having that front light is awesome. I don't know if it's necessarily bright enough to be going around even just at that 15 miles per hour you know kind of going full bore in a, in a blackened environment where that's my only source of light but it is always nice when we get those lights and we don't have to go up and adjust it so because this bike doesn't have any suspension either in the front forks or the rear it is nice that we do have these foam grips they are absorbing a lot of the little bumps and, and things that we're hitting and even with this sprained wrist I got going on over here um, still it's absorbing enough for this to not be a you know a painful experience for me either in case anybody's wondering I am okay I get to keep the arm so it all works out I was doing a little a little mountain biking and uh, you know I had a little boosty kicker with a little too much boost a little too much kick and there you go but that's learning you know you gotta fall back down you gotta get back up well fall down lay there for a couple minutes roll around in agony then you get back up and that's that's just life it's a good uh it's a good life lesson there i feel like somewhere about three quarters of the way through these reviews it's just like some solid life advice whether it's like how to find love whether it's how to deal with failure and defeat you know i like to keep it fresh it's also towards the end so really only the hardcore people get to hear it you know those people that are I see the analytics guys. I know who leaves at five minutes. I know who leaves at six minutes. It's for the real OGs, the guys who are staying here for 20 minutes to watch a, a bike review on a bike that, uh, you know, might not even be for them. They're just like, hey, that's an electric bike. I like electric bikes. I'm gonna watch this thing. All right, guys, that is gonna do it for our review of the HTR from Neza. If you wanna know more, I'll have a link down to their website. And if you guys have any questions, or anything I didn't touch on in the in-depth review section, please let me know down below. I love talking to you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.